Hi folks, Mike here from Random Acts of Cooking, and I'm back. Actually, I never really went anywhere. Well, we took a six-week, uh, yeah, six-week uh, cross-country trip. Got back, and I've been busy working with the Yavapai toy makers, making wooden toys that gets distributed to children's hospitals, shelters, and what have you. And anyway, that's been keeping me pretty busy. Well, the lighting in this room isn't the best, but anyway, this is just a sample of some of the stuff I've been putting together for the kids. Uh, cars, airplanes, trains, race cars, jeeps. Anyway, this is just a sample of what I've been doing, so, alright, enough of that, back to cooking. But I decided this is Labor Day weekend, I'm going to unlabor and do some cooking, so let me show you. Okay, today I've got some chicken thighs uh, that I think, pretty sure they've been injected with water because these are some the biggest chicken thighs I've ever seen. Green paint on my hands, I've been doing a bit of work outside. And I've got some uh, baby back ribs and some ears of corn. We're going to be doing all this on the pit barrel cooker. I'm going to get the ribs started first because these are going to take a few hours. Then we'll put the chicken on, and then I think when the chicken's done, that'll give us room on the pit barrel cooker to do all six ears of corn. So, let me show you. Okay, I got my ribs ready here. I took the membrane off of the back of this. It did not want to go peacefully, but I finally won. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of mustard on here to act as the binder for the seasoning. The seasoning, I think for everything I'm going to do uh, for the chicken and the ribs is this uh, Rio Grande Gourmet Seasoning. It just says barbecue rub. So that's what we're going to put on pretty liberally for all of this. Okay, that should do it for the ribs. Now I'm going to let this sit and go get the pit bell cooker. So I'll see you outside. Okay, here's my chicken thighs. I have five of them. And as I said, some of these are pretty good size for a chicken thigh. I thought I turned off most of the stuff I don't want on them. Alright, we're going to use the same seasoning we did on the other ones. This is barbecue rub. Got a picture of a pig, but oh well. And what I'm going to do, these are going to be a couple of hours before I do anything with them. So I thought I would soak these, get these coated, and put them in a Ziploc bag put them back in the refrigerator and let the uh, let this seasoning kind of soak into the chicken before we actually cook them. Alright, these go back in the fridge. Like I say, let that flavor soak into them while we're cooking the ribs. Okay, I just put the little basket of coals in there. I've got some uh, apple wood on there for my smoke. And what I'm going to do, this is a multi-cook. I've got the, the rack here that's got the door on it. That's going to go in where the cooking rack is. This side is where the ribs are going to hang down. I'm going to put the chicken on this side when that's ready. So that's, uh, that's it for now. Let's get this up to temperature and then we'll hang our rack of ribs right in that hole there. Back in a bit. Alright, I think we are up to temp. I've got my ribs and I've got two hooks in them, one towards the bottom, one at the top. That is because if I need to... Oop, it's gonna, if I need to rotate these during the cook, I don't have to worry about sticking another hook in there. I'll just flip it around. All right, that's on. Uh, that's all on this for probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Then I'll check them and spritz them and do what I need to do next. So see you in a bit. Okay, we're at the one hour mark. Just gonna see how we're doing here. Looks pretty good. It's just a little spritz with apple juice while we got it out here. Alright, back in about a half an hour and then we'll actually measure the temperature of this and see where we are. Okay, it's been about another 35 minutes. And this time I'm gonna actually measure the temperature and see where we are. 170, 175. I'm gonna go get my chicken ready. 
And meanwhile, I'm going to flip these around. All right, I'm going to go get my chicken now. Get that going. And there's the chicken cooking. All right, the chicken's been gone about a half an hour. I noticed my temperature has dropped just a little bit from the cooking temperature. Let's see what our chicken's sitting out here. It's almost done. We're about 160, 160, 165. I'm going to give those just a few more minutes. Meanwhile, I've got some barbecue sauce to rub on my ribs. A barbecue sauce is just the uh, beaters, I don't know, I can't, oh, buffalo wild wings. Honey barbecue. All right, I'm going to give these probably about another 15 minutes, and I think we're going to be done with this portion of it. All right, the wind's picking up out here, so let's see what we can do. Time to pull these off. I just checked the temperature of these ribs one minute ago, and we're up to done. I think it was about 190. So anyway, here's those ribs. Almost lost that one. Yeah, they're up to 175, so the chicken comes off now, too. Flip this back over. Yeah. Close that up. Now bring the corn out. Okay, we had the corn soaking for, oh, maybe an hour or so. Now it just goes on here for about 20, 25 minutes. And then that'll be done. And I'm going to leave all the, the, the rods out because we've got to get the temperature back up. See you in a bit. Okay, here's the ribs. They've been sitting for about 15 minutes. Now these were not wrapped during the cook. These were only wrapped towards the end to let them rest. They look really good and they, they smell really good too. I'm going to go right into the middle. A nice little smoke ring on it. All right, let's do a little taste test. Here's my rib taste test. They're not fall off the bone, I can tell you that. They do bite off really easy. Good flavor. Really good smoke flavor. This works. That's good. If I'd have planned this out a little bit better, I probably should have wrapped them for the last half hour or so and then taken them out and put the barbecue sauce on them for another 15 minutes. They're not really juicy, but they're not completely dry either, if that makes sense. But uh, they are really, really good tasting. So I'm going to say they worked for me anyway. Now let's try the chicken. I took the chicken off the same time as the ribs. Okay, the internal temperature was 175. Give or take a couple. This still got some juices in there, so I'm gonna get this on a plate. Still have a kind of fair amount of juice come off while it was wrapped up. And they smell great. Not quite as much smoke ring, but then again, these those weren't on there near as long as the ribs. I don't know if you can see the juice coming off of that. Let's give this a taste test. Okay, there's my chicken piece taste test. That is really good too. Not as much flavor as the ribs, but this doesn't have the barbecue sauce on them. But this is really good. I like that seasoning, uh, the the rub. But uh, yeah, this turned out really good too. And it's juicy and tender. Mm. That's good. All right, 
Let's go check the corn. Okay, here is our ears of corn. By soaking the corn with the husk on them and then cooking this way, it kind of oh, so hot. It kind of gives it a nice steam from the inside. The only downside with doing this now, this stuff is this is hot. Okay, a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt. Let's give it a taste test. Corn on the cob, steamed in the husk on a pit barrel cooker. Mmm, that's good. Buttery flavor, teensy bit of salt, and actually a teensy bit of smoke flavor got through. Mmm, boy this is going to be a good dinner. Chicken, ribs, corn, and broccoli. But it's all good. Catch you later, folks. Bye.